Hello folks. Today I'll be doing a quick video showing you how to keep your laptop running nice and cool and avoid things like thermal throttling and hard system crashes caused by massively overheating CPU normally and then the CPU overheating actually even before it throttles will start to overheat the components around it and cause it to crash. This is just a little intro bit here for the uh, heat sinks at the back here and they are what pull the air out either side. I believe this is the CPU side and that's the GPU side. So I'll start the video by saying you really need to get a little laptop mount here. What you do is you just pop that underneath, plug it into one of your USBs. It then has a couple of USB outs on it itself as well. And that will help to push air directly into the fans at all times, even when the fans themselves aren't running very hot. You can probably get one of these for about 20 British pounds, probably about the same in America, $20. And this will help to reduce the temperature by at least a few degrees and also provide cooling even when your laptop is powered down. Now, the next one is pretty easy. Uh, you wanna type into Google throttle stop and uh, this is the first link that comes up and you just go ahead and download that. And there's the software and I'll just show you it open here. So you wanna go ahead and install this piece of software. What this software does, it is enables you to undervolt your CPU and therefore reduce temperatures. You can also then reduce the maximum clock frequency of the CPU. So this one will clock right up to about four gigahertz, I think. It goes pretty high if you would allow it to, but I won't because if I allow it to go above 3.1 gigahertz, it will get so hot that eventually on a long session, it will cause the laptop to shut down. Uh, this is not just an issue of HP Omen laptops. It's an issue with virtually all laptops, unless they use liquid metal. Um, but that's a whole nother story. And it's because there's this push to get them as thin as possible, as you can see, even though nine times out of 10, it'll be sat in front of you and you'll probably never take it anywhere. And if you do, it'll be in a carry case or it'll be in your car. Um, it really doesn't need to be that thin or that light, um, but that's where the push is to get these really thin and light. And as such, there's not a huge amount of room for heat sinks and uh, heat pipes and fans, although this has got pretty decent heat pipes and stuff, but this CPU can generate such a high amount of heat that it's actually hard to dissipate so, that. I set it to 3.1. Now, if you're in a colder environment, you might be able to go higher, say 3.3, maybe 3.5, but you will find that your system will start to become unstable uh, if you go any higher than that. If you leave it at the stock settings, it will just run up to like four gigahertz and just run until it gets so hot that it turns off. Uh, the fans will ramp up massively, it'd be really noisy, but they're just not capable of removing all of that heat. So you need a piece of software like Throttle Stop. Open the FIVR control, and you wanna turn it down to say 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, something like that. And you wanna make sure that's on all cores. Um, there is some argument to have the first two cores at a higher uh, frequency. For older games, perhaps, that don't use uh, the multi-core um, layout. That, that is an option, but I just, for ease, set them all 3.1. And then this bit is a bit of trial and error here. So you're gonna to wanna to turn down the voltage. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to do it in 1000 millivolts, uh, sort of steps, and you wanna turn that down and just see if it's stable. So turn it, keep turning it down and then play uh, something like an intense game or use 3D Mark or run the sort of CPU benchmark and then you'll see what uh, you can what sort of voltage is stable i found it stable at, at this voltage anything more than that and it worked most of the time but it will sometimes crash so you want to reduce the voltages down on it so that's quite an easy one to do it seems scary but it's not that's quite easy to do really and then you'll see uh, even under load this won't go above 3.1 you can see there and then your cpu temperatures uh, 65 degrees was playing a, a light game on it earlier on, but um, you'll find that uh, you'll probably hit a max 
of say 80, 83. And that's, that may seem really, really high, but it's actually not. That's perfectly within spec for these Intel CPUs. <clears throat> now the third one, and this is a little bit more complicated, you're gonna wanna take your laptop apart because the chances are uh, it's been built and it's been sat there for a while perhaps, not being used, be waiting to be sold. Uh, you're gonna wanna take it apart and usually underneath you'll find a good selection of screws. I'll, um, I'll just tilt up the base just so you can see. So you'll have these tiny little screws underneath. Don't know how well you can see them, but there'll be probably about 10 of them. And you're gonna wanna go ahead and take them all out. And then the base of the unit should just pop off. Uh, I'd use a plastic spudger. It's tempting to get a screwdriver in there, but you will scratch it if you do that. So I'd use a plastic spudger and just pop that right off and then you'll be able to get to the heat sink. It's understandable that taking apart your laptop may seem scary, but it does not in fact invalidate your warranty. Also, it's a good idea to take one of these apart because generally they only come with one stick of RAM, which will quite heavily impact their usability and performance. So I'd recommend opening them up anyway to stick another stick of RAM in there. So once you get down there, you need to just unscrew the CPU uh, heatsink and the GPU heatsink. It's generally all one uh, big assembly. And you just go ahead and pull that out and then you'll find the GPU and the CPU in there. Now they should be, they're kind of what we would say, uh, they're de-lidded. So your uh, cooling apparatus makes direct contact uh, near enough with the CPU die. So you're gonna wanna remove, using a, a, a piece of link cloth and perhaps a little bit of alcohol, wipe, you're gonna to wanna to remove the uh, existing thermal paste, which may well have dried out by that point, and use something like uh, Cooler Master diamond paste, something along those lines, a little bit more expensive and with a higher sort of ability to remove heat. And you're gonna to wanna to put a little dot in the middle or a little cross, people, uh, opinions vary on that. I haven't found a huge amount of difference in CPU temperatures with either. Um, I personally put a cross on mine and then I find that spreads and covers the whole die. Uh, then you're gonna wanna put that back on there, the uh, the cooling apparatus, and you're gonna to wanna to do top left, bottom right, top right, and then bottom left, or some variation of that. The main thing is that you get even pressure across all of them. Now these are probably spring-loaded screws on there, so don't worry too much, but you need to get even pressure across all of the uh, die so that you get the even cooling and then just pop it all back together again switch it on and then just run some sort of test because you need it to get hot uh, you need it to then sort of almost like melt a little bit to fill in all the gaps on the CPU on top of the die there because even though it looks perfect to the eye it's not so this needs to fill in that and then you'll probably find you'll reduce your temperatures by around 10 degrees so 10 degrees of temperature reduction with a cooling pad put on there um, and throttle stop running, um, you should be fine to then play your games. And in all honesty, 3.1 gigahertz is perfectly fast enough to play all your games, uh, even at 144 frames per second, which is what the monitor is on this. So I hope that helps uh, if you buy one of these laptops, because it can be quite disconcerting when it's getting so hot, especially here, where the heat sinks that run underneath. Uh, it can get so hot, you can barely touch it. And I can understand if you spent a thousand pounds, two thousand pounds, whatever, you might be getting really worried about your investment. And these companies don't want to take it back because technically it is within spec. Uh, as you can see here, 97 degrees is where it will start to throttle. So it is within spec, but um, that doesn't mean it's not going to cause issues for the surrounding um, power delivery components and whatnot. So it's worth doing the things I've suggested here. And uh, I hope that helps you and uh, makes your laptop gaming experience a lot better and that you don't have so many issues then. It's worth vacuuming them out once in a while as well um, or get a pressurized air can and sort of blow into the uh, heat sinks and get rid of some of the built up dust. So yeah, I hope this helps you. And if it did, uh, please remember to leave a like, comment, uh, subscribe, check out my Patreon. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.